friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise and today I'm going to show off a few of my reptile friends like Hobbs, my Macklet's Python here, while I answer your questions. So I did a poll a few weeks back, I think, asking if this was something you guys would like, and the results were pretty positive, and I got a ton of great questions. So to everyone who posted a question, thank you so much, I really appreciate you guys participating. Now I have seen all of the questions, but I want to keep the field kind of spontaneous, so I have my dad compile the questions for me. He's grouped similar questions together, and also by who has asked them. He's going to be firing them off at me while my mom will be bringing new animals every couple of questions to kind of keep things interesting. It's a team effort. All right, so what's behind me? Okay, we have a jungle behind me. I feel like being in space. Not a cargo hold, it's like real outside space. I guess that will do. You're a nerd. All right. Okay, who's first? Okay, uh, I'm going to apologize up front if I mispronounce any names. Uh, but first up is Lucia Frau and Shamik Saf, who want to know, what is your favorite reptile? Ooh, that's a good question. Okay, um, of my pets, I think I'm going to have to cover Hobbs' ears for a second. Uh, jump, jump, I'm black and white, Argentine tiger. There, I said you. I totally said you. But overall, I would probably say the Titanoboa, because... It's a Titanoboa, even though they are extinct, but doesn't matter. Next up, we have four questions from the Wildlife Brothers. Oh, 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 sorry to interrupt, but hi guys. Evan and Harrison, the Wildlife Brothers, have an awesome outdoor adventure channel. Uh, they have great animal information. They're lots of fun, and you should all go and check them out. You know, when you're done watching this. They're awesome. But, okay, get back to it. Can I go now? Yes. Okay. What is one thing you would tell all new reptile owners that you wish you knew when you started? Oh, okay. Um, there's a lot. I guess, okay. First would probably be that the hobby is a bit addictive. You keep wanting to buy one and then you find out a new reptile and it's really pretty and cool and you're like, oh, I want that. So you start researching it and then you get it and then and then you go to a reptile expo. Oh, self-restraint. You need self-restraint. <laughs> it's hard to pick. Probably just research more than you think you should and don't take one source. Research from everywhere. <laughs> also, all of the tongs, you need to buy them because they grow feet and they walk away and then wherever all the lost socks are, that's where they go. Okay. And front opening enclosures. You never realize how important that is until you have 30 plus animals. All right, the second, second question from the Wildlife Brothers. If you could break into the keeping hobby of another group of animals, what would you like to care for? Uh, birds. <laughs> birds? So still reptiles. Still reptiles. <laughs> Yeah, Birds? but they're, yeah, but, um, I would just like, in general, to have a flock of crows. I don't care if, uh, if I own them or not. Crows? That's it, yeah, murder of crows, because they bring you shiny things. What is something about the reptile hobby that you wish more people knew, whether they're in it or not? Uh, snakes and just reptiles in general do have feelings, and they can actually think. They are a lot smarter than people give them credit for. And uh, they would also like to know, when are you coming to Pennsylvania for some salamander hunting? I don't know. When are you guys coming to Ontario here to go look for eastern fox snakes? We might have fox snakes in Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, Baguette Woman and Shamik Sath right. want to know, what reptile do you hope to get next? Or are you getting a new reptile? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're not planning on getting anything, but you say that, and then you get how many? Three more reptiles, and so, so probably not. If I was gonna get something, it would be an albino checkered garter snake because they're awesome and I love them, and they, they're yeah, they're amazing. 
Uh, are we good for space? Do you want to change it to something else? Yes, let's change it so that Hobbs, you know, doesn't get sucked into the vacuum and die because his lungs they go pop. What do you want to be? Um, on top of a mountain. All right. Adequate. <laughs> that cat woman. That cat woman wants to know what inspired you to start a YouTube channel, or any advice you'd give someone looking to start a YouTube channel. Okay, I've always wanted to do something with reptiles when I grew up. And my dad came across Snake Discovery and he introduced it to me and my mom. So watching Emily present her snakes the way she does to break down fear and misconceptions and seeing how it helped my mom overcome her fear, it was very powerful and I thought that I could do something like that too. I'm homeschooled. So with my parents, we decided that this could be a focal point of my curriculum with most videos, each being kind of like a school project in a way. But you know, way more fun for me, obviously. So they were- That's the important Yeah, yeah, obviously. They were focused on reptiles, nature, biology, but through researching, I get to explore geography, history, history, social studies, conservation, geology, paleontology, climate sciences. Um, we get language arts with writing and editing scripts, presentation skills, uh, there's tech stuff with the cameras and editing and social media and the analytics and art and creativity. Aside from the regular math workbooks and regular reading, having a channel covers quite a bit. What about, what about the advice part? What advice do you have? Oh, okay. Uh, right. The advice part. So I'm pretty sure there are probably people who could give far, far better sources for advice on YouTube, but I'm very happy to give my perspective based on the journey so far. YouTube is a lot more work than you would think. It was for me anyways. Keep it fun by making stuff that you yourself would like to watch and try to make improvements as you go. Most channels fizzle out after a few months, so if you stick with it, you're already ahead of most other people. It can be disheartening, especially at first, to put in all of these hours of work on a video and getting only a handful of views. Someone on the NewTubers subreddit, which is a great resource, you should definitely use it, said something that resonated really well with me, which was, think of your videos as content for your future subscribers. Maybe they aren't watching now, but in a year from now, you got a bunch of new people coming to check out your channel. The stuff you make today will be what they will seek out later when they want to see more of what you have done and to see how much you've grown. That perspective was really helpful for me, so just keep making solid content and eventually something will click. You'll hit some magical tipping point in the algorithm, maybe something you do will go viral, or you'll get noticed by another more influential YouTuber and they give you a generous shout out. Uh, what got you into reptiles? Ooh, um, my dad with fishing actually got me into reptiles. When I was really little, we would go fishing in the summer on every single weekend, and I would always be looking for frogs, turtles, or snakes. Um, and I found them all so fascinating, and of course the fish. You would have to give me the fish, because I, I didn't have the patience. Five-year-old little me didn't have the patience to sit there waiting for them to bite. Yeah, I'd have to pretend like I needed to tie my shoe yeah, and obviously. you a rod with a fish on it. Uh -huh. go, oh, I caught more fish than you. But I won that competition when I was eight. I'm sure you did. I still okay. have that trophy, okay? Okay. How many reptile snakes and snake species do you keep currently? <laughs> do some quick math. Don't forget the babies. Okay, I think, I could be wrong, that's 38 reptiles and amphibians. Ooh, okay. We have 28 of them are snakes, 12 different species. Uh, yeah. I think that's right. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> if you can have any reptile as a pet, no limits on ethics, fun, space, etc., what would you choose? I know the answer to this. Komodo dragon. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I thought Titanobo was a bad idea, but I'm all for Komodo dragon. Uh, or or, or Tutara. 
Or two tar. Oh, that'd be cool. Okay. Why not? You just give it scratch. Nile monitor. Yeah. There's, okay, right. they're, why are they always the big reptiles? I guess this is kind of a similar question, but maybe more yep. realistic. A uh, baguette okay. woman, again. Uh, what's a dream reptile you hope to get? Albino checker garter snake, Bolin's python, and maybe a blood python. Okay. But the two first ones, Bolin's and albino checker garter snake, right. for sure. So this leads into her next question, which is, what's your favorite species and morph of garter snake? Albino checker garter snake! Right, we got a few questions here from Shamik Saf. Hello, Safi. Hi. Will you get any new colonians or lizards? Colonians? They're turtles. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Duh. Okay. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. yeah. I knew that. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. All right, well, answer the question. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I would say probably not. No, we have Agatha. We've had turtles in the past. So, no. No new turtles or lizards. We have. We have sufficient. All right, next question. <clears throat> Out of all the geckos out there, which is the best pet? I know there isn't a perfect gecko, but you know, try to understand. Uh, I like the wording of that question quite a bit. Toke, Toke gecko is the best pet? <laughs> no, no, no. Very few instances is it the best, but I don't have any experience with Tokes. Maybe I'm wrong. I would probably say gargoyle gecko. Simply because I think they're better than crested geckos because they're nowhere near as jumpy. They're a bit sturdier and solid, more solid, and they grow back their tails. Though I like crested gecko morphs better, but if you're wanting more pet instead of pretty, I'd go with gargoyle gecko. I think they're just sturdier all around. All right. The next question from Shamik. It's a doozy. Is it cruel to keep reptiles in captivity? You were certainly weren't lying. Uh -huh. uh, if you are a good keeper, you are up to date with your new care information, feed it the right amount, you take care of it well, not at all. In fact, I would say it could even be better than the wild. You know, there are no predators, you're never going hungry or thirsty, you're not living in constant fear. With proper care, can't stress that enough, not at all. Improperly kept though, any pet kept poorly could be considered cruelty, and it is. We really do have a responsibility to improve. Research and improve that enclosure. Research and improve your care. And as you continue to have that reptile until the day it dies, you research because care is going to change. That cat food that you've been buying forever for your little kitty cat, Apparently it's bad now, so you need to change your brand. You, there's anything can change, so just keep researching and try your very, very best to take care of it. It depends on you. It's not like it can go and get something from somewhere else. Um, are you happy with this background with Rosa? Young Tom might be uh, kind of scary for her. Oh yeah, you're right. Let's do underbrush. No, yes, Australian underbrush. Like the Australian Outback kind of thing? Yes, but under the bushes. Sure, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, snap don't... of the fingers. Oh, great. <laughs> Last question from Shamik. What are better alternatives to modern lizards? Something which is dinosaur-like, like a monitor. I'd say a black and white Argentine take it. Yeah, I think that's fair. I could be biased, but I'm... I'd... All right. It's very hard to not be biased. I know you love Jojo. -Jo. Yeah. I love you too, Rosa. All right. Alan Weiss wants to know, if your little cousin wanted a reptile, what would you recommend? Uh, great question, first off. I would probably recommend a corn snake if it's a snake. And if it's a lizard, probably a gargoyle gecko or a leopard gecko. Those are pretty good options. Yeah. Yeah. Great. For starting. Alan would also like to know, what don't you have now that you'll get when you move out of your parents' house? And when is it exactly you're moving out of our house? <laughs> he asked that part too? No, no, that's what I want to know. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Uh, hmm. Probably after Beckett dies, because Mom won't let me take her with me. So probably when I'm 20-ish. But what are you going to get when you move out? You know, when you were little, you told me you were never, ever leaving. 
see how times have changed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a blood python if I don't have one by the time I move out. <laughs> okay, so we'll just get a baby and we'll work our magic. Okay, I wanted a blood python. You said no. What the hell? Okay, but I also said no boas. They get like, they get like, they get like this thick too. Some cases that might be a bit big. I don't know the healthy size for a blood python. I could be completely wrong. But they, they, they... It's a short. Yeah. Yeah, I know. They, they look, look like a giant turd. That's <laughs> kind of the... That's kind of the... Wow! That's so thing. mean! Okay. All right. Moving, moving on. on. <laughs> Lucia Frau and Unicorn Gaming both asked a similar question. What was your first reptile and how old were you when you got your first reptile? Do you remember your first reptile? It wasn't yeah, I, I, I know. I don't remember how old I was. Okay, I think I was about seven years old when we lived in South Bend, Indiana. Our upstairs neighbor was moving and he had like this algae covered 10 gallon tank with two inches of water in it and this yellow belly slider, wasn't you? A yellow yeah. slider? Yeah. yeah, yellow belly slider. That was about this big and this 10 gallon with two inches of water and algae was covering her back and the tank. Um, and he asked me if I would like a pet turtle. And as soon as my mom saw the tank and the condition that she was living in, we were both like, yes. And took it initially because it broke our hearts to see it living like that. And I got a call at work saying we need to stop at the pet store on the way home to pick up an aquarium. A bigger aquarium, yeah. Yeah. And I had no idea why. I remember when you had to brush the algae off of Tulip's back with, with an old brush. toothbrush and yep. she kept trying to bite you because she was angry and tired. Yeah, but then she became very sweet. Because... And then she would sit on my lap. Then we fell in love with her and ended up with two more turtles. She was cared for properly. Then we gave her a giant mm -hmm. pond when we moved to Virginia. Did we trade up animals? No. Well, nobody can even see Rosa But now. she's warm and happy. Yeah. Is she? <laughs> now you can see her. <laughs> Alright, we'll swap after this one. Okay. Lucia Frau wants to know, what's your favorite animal? I'm assuming non-reptile. I would assume that too. Uh, it can't be all of them. I think I can uh, choose. Um, all right, well, how about I throw a possum? I love them. Okay, there you go, possum. But then there's that? also stoats and voles and tigers and... Skunks. And beckets. And, and skunks and, and, and raccoons. And, and raccoons. And squirrels. <gasps> And crows and and puppies and puppies like corgis. I love corgis. Oh I know. God. And frogs. There are frogs. Wait. Oh, we're okay. venturing into reptiles, amphibians. So you see the dilemma. I see the dilemma. So what's your favorite animal, Annalise? That's not a reptile or amphibian. I'm sorry, I can't choose. Okay. All right. Here's here's this is an important question. Mm. Uh, do you agree that turtles are assholes? Oh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> no, always. Okay, it depends on the individual. I mean, our two snapping turtles, well, we didn't have snapping turtles, that would have been different. Um, our two, uh, well, our three turtles, they were all very sweet. Agatha's pretty, pretty gentle. She's, she's a turtle too, isn't she? Yeah, yeah exactly. okay. It's tortoise, yeah, but true. Yeah. But yeah, she's sweet. Um, okay. so no. Generally speaking, no individual. But they could be. They could be. There you go. All right. They could uh, be coming oh, for is, you. This is going to be. They could be watching you. All right, folks, get get comfy because I think this is going to be a long one. Okay, wait then. Should we trade out animals? Let's trade oh, out okay. animals. It's yeah. good idea. We. Okay. Hi, little loaf. Whoa, hello. Look, do you see how big she is? She's gotten giant. Oh, you're so strong. Like, look at her head. Her head. Do you remember? We brought her home in something that was this big. Yeah, it was a little bigger than that. Fine, but small. All right. Uh, where would Tatuba like to be in the oh, world here? Um, We're in let's go with her Russia. native, where she's from, okay. in the wild. So, like, jungle again? Welcome to the jungle. But a different... A different jungle than the first jungle. Okay. Get pictures from actually where she's from in the wild. Okay. That jungle. I gotta get pictures on you get pictures. This is your video. I mean, the picture's already there. It's just... <laughs> snap the what the, I didn't right. hear you snap okay. your fingers. How can it be there? <sighs> so this is uh, Lucia Frau's last question. Oh, all right. And it's going to be a long one, like I said. Oh. What are your favorite YouTube channels? Oh, dear. 
Again, you weren't for the, lying. For the person who has no cable and just mostly watches YouTube. Um. Maybe, maybe break maybe, them down by category. Yeah, organize them like. Okay, let's okay. start with reptile. Reptile. All right, that's easy. Breaking them down, good idea. Smart. Snake discovery, of course. Emily helped me start on my journey. Clint's reptiles also is great. We watch Nerd. I, I do love Lilith. Yes, I do. She's beautiful. Too. Professor Herp. Elle's Reptiles, Reptiliatus, um, of course, Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, a lot of you are watching right now because of Adam. Yeah, not only does he have a terrific channel, but he's also been a huge friend to my channel, and I'm so grateful for his support. So thank you, Adam, if you're watching this. I would also have to say Camp Kennan, Rose City Reptiles, uh, Dave Kaufman. Uh, Cusco, Brian Cusco. Brian Cusco, yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Reptilian How many people Garden. Can you remember off the top of your head. Emma Lynn Sampson, you watch her sometimes too. Yep. Uh huh. Uh, you can add more if you forget. Put them in the yeah, table. we'll put them in the description. There right. are a lot. So what about like uh, uh, like outdoor stuff? That's not. Oh yeah, there are a bunch of YouTubers around my size that I really like their content, and they are working really hard, and we engage often and they definitely deserve more subs so like i said the wildlife brothers that i already mentioned they are great you should go check them out um my wild backyard spencer is awesome even though he does a lot of spider content i'm still not there yet with the spiders but i'm i'm trying trying going wild with satchel snow is great um he's got so much energy and is a lot of fun uh, Wild Files uh, and Ecotasia do good stuff, so go check out those guys too. Who else? I feel like I'm forgetting people. Uh, Bryce? Oh yeah, Bryce Broom, who's from South Africa. Sorry, Peter. Uh, he has some really cool venomous snakes, and he does outdoor content too, so yeah, he's awesome. I'm sure, like I said, there's probably a bunch we've all forgotten right now. They'll be in the description if we forgot about them. What about like non-reptile? Like educational stuff that's not reptiles. Oh, probably PBS Eons, SciShow, Kyle Hill is an award-winning science communicator, and what you get when you order Chris Hemsworth off of wish.com. His joke, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else? It's his joke, not I mine. Know, it's, a good, it's a good joke. Oh my god. It's a good joke. Clint Explains, which is Clint's second non-reptile channel that is awesome. Veritasium is great, but when he gets really mathy, it hurts my head. I don't like math. It's not I'm not good at it either. So, you know. It's okay to be smart is good. Physics girl, backyard scientist. Oh. What? I can't this is okay. Florida man, but smart. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the Y Files is not very big, but he has awesome quality. AJ does content from history to uh, conspiracy theories to strange topics and UFOs. It It's awesome. It sounds odd, but it's good odd. And who's that British guy? Lindy Beige? No. I, I... What's wrong with Lindy Beige? He has good information, but... My dad makes me watch him for historical stuff. I I don't really like history, so I'm not that into that content. But you know, he, Lloyd's pretty funny, and his ad reads are just the weirdest things. <laughs> I don't even know how he get his gets his sponsors to approve them. Half of the time he's making fun of the sponsors, and the other half it's a rambling mess. So yeah, that's entertaining at least. But I'm I'm talking about the mustache guy with the suspenders oh, who does the. Oh, body <laughs> Yes, that's him. Um, I love his stuff. Sometimes it's sciency. Sometimes it's just, it's historical. Sometimes it's more supernatural or just kind of random stuff. Well, okay, what about non-educational? What do you watch for fun? Oh, okay. For fun, but you know, for fun, fun. Mm, except for Lindy yeah. Except <laughs> Okay, funny stuff. I would say probably Gus Johnson and his brother Sven. Ryan George is great. There's no one better at talking to himself on the internet, in my opinion. And he's from my dad's hometown in Montreal, so that's cool, I guess. I also like comedic commentary videos, um, people talking about weird internet trends that I'm not really up to speed on as the sheltered weird homeschool kid 
that I am. And looking back on old pop culture stuff through a more modern lens, you know, that kind of thing. Danny Gonzalez, Drew Gooden, Curtis Connor, another Canadian. Uh, Eddie Burback, those Who, kinds of channels. That, the one you just started watching? Oh, Jenny, Jenny Nicholson. Okay. Yeah. yeah, her. I like her too. She's good. She's a bit ram rambly too, yeah. I do like the supernatural and true crime stuff on BuzzFeed with Ryan and Shane. That's a lot of fun. Um, I did not realize until just now how much YouTube you and I watch. Okay. Uh, Peace Line wants to know, what is your favorite kind of turtle slash tortoise? Tortoise. Tortoise. Um, I think I'm going to be biased, but red foot tortoise. I realize I'm, I'm in a very odd position. Okay. Good, good answer. I think uh, Agatha would approve. I think she would too. She's very judgy, so. All right. Uh, Kate Anderson wants to know, what's one reptile that you love taking care of and why? I would say Jub Jub because it's really fun to interact with her and she cuddles and she likes being swaddled like a little baby and she's smart. Um, it's it's fun to watch her plot about like she owns the place and then climb up something effortlessly as if it were flat terrain almost like it's easier to climb vertically than this way Atharva would like to know how many venomous snakes do you have and is it intimidating handling them um okay currently including some babies I have 17 venomous snakes, <gasps> but I am not at all intimidated at handling any of them because most of them are garter snakes. I have 15 garters from four species. Unless there's like this weird allergic reaction, their venom really has no meaningful effect on humans like at all. The other two venomous snakes that I do have have a bit more potent of a venom, but they are still considered pretty safe to handle. They are my Plains Hognose Snakes. Their venom is very mild, and just like garter snakes, they are rear fang venomous, so they'd have to be working um, pretty hard to get some of the venom into me. I'm careful with them, of course, but it's not that much of a concern at all. Should we switch now? Yeah. Okay. Can you go to Tupa? All right, what do you, what do you want? Uh, got medieval Castle, um, ooh, Mordor. I like medieval castles. Medieval castle it is. Because he's a royal python! Perfect. Alright, Pumpkin the Happy Tort. Aw, oh, that's a cute name. I would like to know, what's your opinion on sulcata tortoises? Would you ever keep one? I like them. They're amazing animals. If I had the room for an adult, and if it didn't snow half of the year here, um, they're great, and I would definitely have one. But... They get so big and they're unrealistic for many people because of that. And the amount of room they need is very grand. So I would love to own one one day, but not anytime soon. Yeah, probably not in Canada. Eh? Yeah, no, no way. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> All right, uh, Draco the Dragon. What are some great alternatives to corn snakes? Hmm, I would say probably Russian rat snakes, milk snakes, um, Cali king snakes, though, I, I guess really any king snake, most of them anyways. Even garter snakes, some species, they're great. Like, I think the coasts. They're pretty laid back and, yeah. yeah. Okay. Luke's Wildlife Adventures. What is your favorite snake species? I think I know the answer to this. Yep. I'd say albino checkered garter snake. The one you don't have, got it. Okay. Well, it's not the one I don't have. I also don't have a Bolin's Python. I love them too. Okay. They're a close second. I need a second chop. <laughs> uh, all right, if you could keep only one reptile, what would it be? Out of all the reptiles you have, oh. we gotta get rid of them all except one. Who do you keep? Oh. Oh. Decide which ones you don't love. <gasps> And keep the one that you do love. That's so mean. I know. I love them all. Okay. But she can cry on camera. Um, it's good for views, right? Oh my is goodness. That, that's that's that... terrible. I did that in the Halloween video. I don't need to do it again. All right. So um, who, who would you keep if you could only have one? 
Jub Jub. It'd have to be Jub Jub. Uh, David Shaw would like to know, what's your favorite weird reptile fact? Oh, uh, okay. I don't know if this qualifies as a reptile fact, but two tars are pretty weird lizards. They, they look like lizards, but they really aren't. They are actually like an ancient and distinct lineage that branches off way before modern modern lizards and snakes. So they are reptiles technically, but they have a lot of traits that predate today's reptiles. Some parts of their skeleton are fish-like and they have no ears. Their teeth are just unlike any extant reptile today. They're just weird and I love them and am going to do a video on them because they are reptiles, but they're not. Are. Is there something you'd love to own but can't because of space, the law, danger, etc.? Komodo dragon or a titano boa. I thought you Again. Just said rhino boa. Or rhino, sorry, rhino iguana. iguana. Yeah. I do like rhino iguanas too, but ooh, just... maybe maybe a Nile monitor. Okay. What? All all well the rhino iguana not, but all terrifying. Can we just go back to titano boa? Yes. You'd love to own that but can't. The extinct for millions of years. Hey, there are no restrictions. It doesn't matter if it's extinct here, I'm assuming. But it doesn't matter I'm if it's assuming. extinct or Okay. You know? Alright. No I'll restrictions. Go. Anything. Saying, you can okay. own anything. I would like to not have any reptiles that could eat. You can own anything. They said danger oh, restrictions all fine. gone. This will be the the most tame animal on the earth. <laughs> okay. Fine. Alright, last question from David Shaw. All uh -huh. right. Okay. Uh, he's commented on some of your other videos before. Yes, I remember. Okay. okay. Hello again. So he wants to know that what's the technical name for that little hole between the lips <laughs> that a snake pokes its tongue out of? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> no one's told me yet. <laughs> it's very funny. If you don't know, that's a call back to my video on snake faces. I talked about the tiny hole that snakes flick their tongue out of and that I could not and still can't find the name for that thing. On that video, he um, said that I should, we should probably just call them uh, tongue holes because it makes sense. But you know, whenever you try to look it up on, on YouTube, on, or not YouTube, on the Google, it just tells me, <laughs> Thank you for saying it tells that. me that I'm trying to figure out what heat pits are. I'm not. <laughs> So you know what? Tongue hole is at least accurate, so. Oh All right, <laughs> I guess there you go. With that's, that. That's it, that's the last one. All right then. With that, I guess let's end the video and say bye. This was a lot of fun. And um, for those of you who asked questions, I hope that you found my answers to be satisfactory. If you have any more questions, you can always comment and I will do my best to answer them. So I uh, guess until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm stuck on Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say that's a fun one. What's the toughest one? What animal is my favorite? Uh, clearly, because you didn't answer it. I did. Spiders? <laughs> it would be better to say what animals are not your favorite. Spiders? Um, hairless Spiders? mole rats and most bugs. <laughs> I forgot you're afraid of hairless mole rats. <laughs> I'm not afraid of them. They just look like, they look like a glob of nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> like if you said, okay, we've liquefied your Purple. nightmare. We took it from your brain. We, and we gave decide it form. to. <laughs> it lives now. And that's a naked mole rat. Yes, but I feel like if I met one, I would fall in love with it. This is everybody's best buddy monkey. Sorry, um, if you made it to the bloopers, I forgot to introduce Monty here. This is my ball python, everybody's best buddy, Monty the python. He's a good boy. He hasn't been on the channel in a little while, so. He's a good boy. Okay. Don't ruin the, <laughs> the cinematography. <laughs> Is that the right word I should Water. be using? <laughs> okay. <laughs>
to rethink that. Wow. Okay, I got it. It's alright. 